Nothing spawned Frontier Free Access Television. Today's game, the Western Mass Division Three Baseball Quarterfinals, as the number two seed Frontier Red Hawks, 19 and one, take on number 10 Greenfield at 10 and 10 here in South Deerfield. Chris Collins, along with Bobby C, also Alec Eckel, and the executive producer of Frontier Community Sports, Kevin Murphy. Bob, this is going to be an interesting matchup. Third time these teams have played. Frontier swept the season series, but can you beat a team? three times in a row on the biggest stage there is. Matter of fact, I will say this, Frontier has definitely proven that they're one of the tough teams here in Western Massachusetts. And with Ben Arnold on the mound, you really have everything going in your favor. You're home, oh, you've got the best pitcher, one of the best pitchers I would say in Western Massachusetts in Ben Arnold. And not only that, but this team can hit too. You look at what this team really is about, Frontier has a lot of weapons and I think Greenfield's gonna have to play a perfect game to be able to win here today. This is actually the same pitching matchup we had the last time we saw Frontier Baseball in FCAT. It's Frontier and Greenfield, then you have Arnold against Owen Phelps. Arnold pretty much controlled the Greenfield uh, offense in that last matchup. He'll have to be everybody's good today. Absolutely, but the one thing we can say about Owen Phelps is Owen Phelps has really done a good job pitching this year, Chris. The problem is is that his team wasn't giving him any offense, and when you don't have offense and you have good pitching, it's sort of a shame, and it sort of brings your pitcher down knowing that they're not able to get the support that they really need. And I think if Greenfield can be able to get some key hits today, score some runs, this could be an interesting game because, like I said, Owen has not pitched bad this year for Greenfield. Now he didn't pitch badly against Frontier the last time in the regular season at Vets Field. The last game we saw, it was just one of those situations where Frontier's bats were a little bit better. Absolutely, and that's been the case this whole season. I mean, if you look at them all year, the reason why they have the high seed they have is because they've been able to do it on the offensive end and the defensive end, and it's always different people stepping it up at different times, and that's why I really like this Frontier team here today. Starting lineup for the Greenfield High School Green Wave, Owen Phelps leads off. He's the pitcher. Jake Sewell bats second. He's a shortstop. Colin Cloutier, the catcher, bats third. Hunter Campbell, the first baseman, bats cleanup. Joel Peabody, the third baseman, uh, followed by Nate Hazelton. Jake Cody getting a start. We'll talk more about that later on as we go. Jake Sack in left field and Josh Phillips in center field. Owen Phelps is in the box, and we're ready for playoff baseball. Greenfield advance with a 7-2 road win at Munson last Thursday. Winner of this game gets the winner of number three Monument and number six Southwick in the semifinals. Arnold rocks and deals for the first pitch of this one. High inside ball one. Strike on the inside corner. That's some that's some heavy heat right there, Bobby. Oh, he's definitely throwing the gas here to start. You know, this is a, this is a pitcher's day today too, Chris. Weather's perfect for a pitcher on a day like today. Count now full at one and one. Strike two, one and two. So Ben jumps out on Owen very quickly here. Ball low, that evens the count at two and two. Owen Phelps is a three-star athlete in Greenfield High School. Absolutely, and he's been playing baseball his whole career. And one thing we can say about Owen is, is that he usually makes contact, but of course he is facing one of the best pitchers here in Western Mass. High curve ball, he fills, fills up the count at three and two, so payoff pitch upcoming. Surprised that he went with that curve ball after being ahead with the two strikes. I would have probably went with a high heater on that one, but that's something that Ben decided to go with on that pitch. Payoff pitch is gonna be huge here. Owen fouls it off, keeps himself alive. He almost had to protect the plate on that one. That was a good outside Absolutely. corner pitch. Yeah, that was a really good spot. Absolutely. And nice job by Owen to be able to get the bat out there for it. Arnold rocks and deals. Foul tip cut the umpire. Oof. Boy, that was uh, right on, too. Uh, Steve Wall's okay. He's shaking up a little bit. He's got his head shaking a little well, bit He's going to wipe that plate off and give himself a minute to recover. Yeah. Yep. Owen just got a little tip of that. Thank God they wear that bad boy. <laughs> Let me tell, tell you. you. Yeah. My goodness. So Owen making him work for it here as the first batter in this D3 quarterfinal game. And he will walk as Arnold just missed on the inside corner, so Greenfield has their first base runner. 
But I'll tell you what, that was a really good at bat right there by Owen Phelps. You know, he was down in the count, had a couple of strikes on him, was able to follow off two of them. Really good bat right there by Owen Phelps to get things started here for Greenfield. That'll bring up Sewell, the shortstop. Phelps gets a lead off first. And a bunt dropped down nicely. And Arnold will go to first. That will advance the runner, so sacrifice. That was a great bunt right there by Jake Sewell because he got the job done getting that runner over to second. Now you got Colin Cloutier and Hunter Campbell, two of the guys who have been key offensive players for Greenfield the whole season. So this could be a big spot right here. If they can find a way to get a base hit, they'll be able to score Owen Phelps and maybe get on the board here in the first inning. Cloutier the catcher. Arnold looks back the runner and delivers high ball one. This may be the earliest Greenfield's had a runner in scoring position of all season against Frontier. Arnold, low ball two, two and oh. Right. I think you're right, Chris. I think this is the, the key runner that Greenfield's had against this team. Two and oh the count. Again, Phelps leads off second. Arnold deals. Oh, it's a pass ball. Phelps will advance the third, so 3-0 and count. So now Phelps is on third, and Cloutier is way up on the count. Well, I think that Ben Arnold's just going to have to go back to just being able to just get the ball over the plate. I noticed that the last three balls have been very low, Chris, and he also had a couple of low ones in that first at bat with Cloutier. I mean, with uh, Phelps. Going back to the windup. Ground ball, base hit to left field. That will score. Phelps and Greenfield's on the board, one nothing. That was a really nice hit right there by Colin Cloutier. He has really had a great senior year. And the kid's had a good year in all the sports that he's done this year, whether it was playing on the football field, on the basketball court, or here playing on the baseball field. Colin Cloutier is definitely a great athlete here, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. And he has put his team up one nothing. and the, hunter, the batter is Hunter Campbell, the first baseman. Ball outside. So Greenfield got a bit of a rally here with one out. And I will say that Hunter Campbell, this kid can hit the ball well too, and there really isn't any gaps for him right now. He's going to have to earn this one. Campbell fouls it up out of play. That will make the count one and one. Hunter also is a pretty good fireballer in late relief for Greenfield. He's done a wonderful job this year being able to be that relief pitcher that Coach Shushnik needed, and I've just been very impressed with the way that Hunter has played this year. Him and Cluder have been the stars, I think. Change up and Hunter waved at it. It was a nice change up there by Ben. I don't want to take anything away from Joel Peabody either, Chris, because he's had a, uh, a very exceptional year as well for Greenfield. Two and one. Actually, one and two, actually, the count. And Hunter keeps it alive. Hunter's battling here with, with uh, Arnold. On deck is the aforementioned Joel Peabody, the third baseman, followed by Hazelton, if it gets that far. And looked like looked like Cloutier was leaning towards second, then Arnold stepped off the rubber. Yep. Greenfield's coming out pretty aggressive, if we've uh, noticed that about Greenfield here, is being aggressive. Cloutier goes, hit and run, Campbell strokes it to left field, this is extra bases! What a shot! Cloutier rounds third, he is gonna score. And Hunter Campbell in with a stand-up double, two nothing. Beautiful hit right there by Hunter Campbell, right down the left field line. Comes up to be big with a double, and now the wave with a two nothing lead here on Ben Arnold. He got every bit of that one, so unlike the last time, the wave roughing up Ben Arnold in the first inning. Batter is Joel Peabody. The third baseman. Good strike right at the knees, 0-1. Well, the one thing that we talked about here at the top of the broadcast was the fact that Owen Phelps could really use some offensive support, and boy, he's already getting some here in the first inning. Ball just inside and high, even the count at 1-1. One one. 
Peabody's got a tough strike zone there. He's a relatively short guy. Campbell leads off second. Curved ball just outside, two and one. So Arnold scuffling a bit here, first inning. <laughs> Cut on and missed. Chris, uh, another note that we want to let people know about is, is that this Greenfield team started off the year at 5-0 and and ended up going 5-10 and in their last 15 games before tournament. Foul back out of play. But I think that's what's been a big deal for Greenfield is the fact that when they win, they win because they do very well with their hitting because they do have exceptional pitching. So this is a really big big spot right here for Greenfield to be able to come up on early with a couple runs. And swung on and missed strike three. So first strike out of the game for Ben Arnold as Peabody goes down swinging. Two down, runner at second for Nate Hazelson, the right fielder. You know, one thing about Hazel is he's been struggling this year at the plate, but boy, when he makes contact, I'm telling you right now, he's a very strong kid, Chris. And if he can get some contact, he can be able to score Campbell here from second base. It's just that he has been struggling from the plate, and hopefully he'll be able to uh, start getting things going. Cut on a miss. That evens the count at one and one. Again, Campbell at second, courtesy of the... RBI double, which scored Cloutier. Phelps and Cloutier have scored in this inning. It's 2 nothing. Wave. Fouled off as Hazelton stays alive. One and two. High ball, too. Evens account at two apiece. Tell you, Arnold's thrown a lot of pitches here in the first inning. Yeah, I haven't got a count on him, but he's he's well up there. Oh, absolutely. Very patient, this Greenfield lineup. That makes it three and two. Well, they, they know Ben by now. I mean, the, the last time he, he handled him pretty good, but they've got him figured out, it looks like, at least in this first inning. Fly ball. That might be trouble. To short center. And it's pulled in. And that retires the side. Two runs, two hits. One left on. We go to the bottom of the first. Three field two, Frontier nothing. This is Red Hawk Playoff Baseball and Frontier Community Access Television. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Greenfield with a 2 nothing lead over Frontier. The starting lineup. For the Frontier Redhawks, Matt Hildreth leads off at third base, followed by Brian Bauman at second. Kiernan Freeman's at first. Connor Wakekiss, the center fielder, is the cleanup hitter. Dylan Appinall is the pinch hitter, batting fifth. Garrett DeForest, the catcher, bat sixth. Kalen Evans is at shortstop, bat seventh. Bryce Jordan in left, bats eighth. And Jake Bryant, the right fielder, bats ninth against Owen Phelps, who comes in with a two-run cushion, Bob, something he hasn't had, I don't think, against Frontier this season. No, he definitely hasn't. But one thing I could say is that this kid has been very effective this year. And I'll tell you, the one thing that he's going to have to worry about more than anything is that this team has a lot of offensive weapons. This 2-0 lead is nice for Greenfield, but it surely isn't a guarantee, that's for sure, with the way that this Frontier Red Hawks team can hit the ball. And, of course, when you still got a guy like Ben Arnold on the mound, uh, there's still a lot of baseball left, that's for sure. Absolutely. So Hildreth steps in. Maddie, of course, had a great season on the football field as well. Frontier dugout trying to talk things up in front of their home crowd. I don't think there's been many times that Frontier's been trailing in this season. Phelps to deal. High ball one. Between the, the crowd noise and the train, given the horn, man, it got a little pumped up over here in South Deerfield. That train's late, by the way. It's <laughs> supposed to be by at 4 o'clock, I think. Uh-oh. Make of that what you will. <laughs> nice pitch. 
Good pitch, but low. Yeah, that was a nice curveball right there. Um, tell you, good patience right here by Hildreth, though. You got to get that leadoff runner, and that's exactly what Owen was able to do. He was able to get that walk early in the first inning for Greenfield. Phelps wines and deals. Strike one. Two and one. To the third baseman, Hildreth. Ground ball to short. Just got him. Oh, nice job right there by Sewell to be able to gather himself at shortstop after the bobble and a nice stretch by Hunter Campbell at first base. So that's one out, six to three. And that will bring up Brian Bauman. Bauman had a quite a hockey season this year for the Greenfield co-op team. Oh, absolutely, one of the best one of the best players on the team, honestly, was Brian. Correct. Curveball, good for strike one. You know, he's not afraid to throw the curve here today. He's thrown it more than he's thrown fastballs. But like I said, it's a great day for a pitcher today, Chris. Yep, 0-1 to Bauman. Pop up, out of play, just behind us. That'll make it 0-2. A little consultation with the third base coach, Chris Williams. Owen to the Bauman. In the dirt. Ooh, he got it right in the throat. Looks like he got it right, not in the throat, pretty close to it. Clute just got it right in the throat there. Yeah, that bounced just in front of the plate and mm. just caught him. I don't know if he caught him straight in the throat, but very close. He's a tough kid too, boy. Cloutier's tough. One and two the count to Bauman. One out, nobody on for the Red Hawks as they trail 2-0 in the bottom of the first of this D3 quarterfinal matchup from South Deerfield. And Bauman swings at a high fastball, strike three. Two up, two down. Really nice, really nice pitch right there. That was a smart pitch, honestly, from Phelps to be able to go up high with two strikes. I always say if you can be able to get them to face and chase, that's the way to do it, man. And that was a nice job right there by Phelps. The batter is Kieran Freeman, the first baseman. Just on the outside corner, strike one, nice pitch. Yeah, he's uh, not afraid to throw that curveball here today. Well, I think that keeping them off balance with the curve is gonna help him. Yep. Phelps winds and deals. Ground ball, back to the pitcher. Over to Campbell on a one, two, three inning for Greenfield. Nice job right there, Owen Phelps at point. Was really able to keep that pitch count down too, Chris. Correct. We played one, we go to the top of the second. It's Greenfield 2, Frontier Nothing. This is Red Hot Playoff Baseball and Frontier Community Access Television. So we now go to the top of the second inning in an interesting uh, situation here for Greenfield. It's going to be Ryan Cody, Jake Sack, and Josh Phillips. The 7 8 9 here is in Ryan Cody, a JV call up, getting a start in this playoff game. You know, that's a big deal for him, and I will say that he is a good athlete, and he's definitely a good second baseman. And the one thing that they're going to like about this kid is, is that his speed is incredible. So if there's any way that he can get on the base pass, you want Ryan Cody on the base pass for your team because this kid can fly. Now, the other guy that's going to be up after him, Sack, you know, this kid's only a freshman. I mean, he's starting as a freshman for Greenfield. They got some really good young, talented players that are going to be coming up through the system here for Greenfield. I think this team is going to be good for the next couple of years, no doubt about it. Definitely built for the future. Wouldn't be surprised to see Ryan Cody lay one down here, maybe. He's fast, and it wouldn't surprise me one bit. Matter of fact, I wondered if they're going out to talk to him right now about that. Sorry. 
Well, Ben Arnold trailing 2 0. Facing Cody Sack and Phillips. Strike one right down the pipe. Yeah, that was a beautiful pitch right there by Ben Arnold. Had some heat on it too, boy. And Cody fouls that one off, so he's quickly down 0-2. Of course, one of the things you mentioned, that this is a team built for the future, the great feeder program. Greenfield has always had a great feeder program with the Greenfield Minor League, and I know you're very much involved in that. Yep, matter of fact, I am the president of the Minor League, so we are very, we're very pleased to be able to say that we've been able to get ready to build a brand new mini Fenway Park at our I can't wait for that, though. That's going to be great. Which will be uh, done here in the middle of summer. Uh, we're very excited about that. We're excited about the fact that we have 176 kids that play in our league, too. And Cody strikes out. Well, that was a great, great changeup right there by Ben Arnold. They're coming out with two heaters. That was a really nice changeup right there. Two strikeouts for Arnold, and that brings up Jake Sack, the left fielder. We both came up through that Greenfield Minor League program, and uh, there's so much tradition. And it's great to see that it continues to thrive. Some, a lot of baseball leagues have not had that success around Massachusetts, but Greenfield's always sort of been there. Yeah, and I'll say one thing also, that Frontier has done a really good job too with their programs, and they've been able to always have competitive teams that come through, and it really shows at this level as well, Chris. You know, it's great to see two towns that have worked hard in their county to be able to open up good baseball to their athletes. And the one thing that we can say is both the community down here in South Deerfield and in Greenfield have done that. 0-1 to sack. High ball one. Leaving the count at 1-1. One one. Nice crowd here for a little after 4 o'clock on a Monday afternoon. Well, you knew this was going to be, you know, generate some interest. That's a great pitch, boy. Right into the inside corner. Oh, wow. And Sacker was like, woo. One and two. So it looks as though after a rough first inning that uh, Ben has borne down here a bit. Outside, even to count at two and two. Still think he's throwing a lot of pitches, though, Chris. Um, you know, he's been able to, uh, he's thrown at least four or five pitches at every, at every hitter so far here in this game. Ground ball to third. Scooped up and dug out nicely at the, out of the dirt. Boy, that was a really nice play right there. Good hit right there by the sacker. And that was a really great scoop right there at first base by Kieran and Freeman. He made a nice play right there. So that goes five to three, two down, and that brings up Josh Phillips, the center fielder. If he gets on, we'll go back to the top of the order, and Owen Phelps. You know, I remember when Josh was uh, an elementary school kid over in the Mohawk district, and uh, <laughs> now he's uh, wearing the green, wearing the green and white now. So talk about a kid who uh, made a little change here. He was always used to wearing the blue and the maroon and the gold, the gold, right. all the gold, dude. Now it's all about the green and white for Mr. Phillips. 0-1 to Josh. Arnold cuts and deals just outside. Evens account at 1-1. One one. You know, one thing that we could say um, about Greenfield is the reason why their their baseball team is so good is well, let's give credit where credit's due to Coach Shushnik. I mean, come on. The dedication that that guy's given Chris has just been amazing. Oh yeah, He's, he is <laughs> synonymous with Greenfield baseball. Oh, I mean, really, that field is how beautiful it is because of him. I'm, I'm going to be, right, you know, Veterans Memorial Field is beautiful because of Tom Shushnik and the and the work that he's put into that field. One and one, the count to Phillips. Just inside, two well, one. You know, this is a guy right here where if you can get your ninth hitter to be able to get on base, you got the top of the order coming up. This could be a good spot with two outs for Greenfield. We're making the anti-Jackie Bradley if he gets on. That's right. Fouled off, evens account at two and two. You know, everybody talks about, you know, JBJ on his not hitting well, but how about his fielding, man? What are you going to say? The well, guys, that's the only guys, reason. <laughs> well, the guy's one of the best center fielders in all of Major League Baseball. I mean, there's a <laughs> lot of guys that are playing baseball, but yeah, he's pretty darn good. That's true. Strike three looking. So Phillips goes down on strikes, and Greenfield goes in order. 
No runs, no hits. Nobody left on. We go to the bottom of the second. We go two, Frontier nothing. This is Red Hawk Playoff Baseball. Frontier to the access television. And we go to the bottom half of the second inning for the Frontier Red Hawks, who went down 1-2-3 in the first. And uh, Greenfield with a 2-0 lead, courtesy of a pretty strong first inning. Both pitchers seem like they're in a pretty good groove right now, Bob. Yeah, a matter of fact, I will say that Arnold looked really good in the second inning, but I'll say in the first inning, it was a couple of really big hits, a nice hard hit by Colin Cloutier and a walk that was led off by Owen Phelps. And then when Hunter Campbell came in with a beautiful double down the left field line, gave Greenfield that two nothing lead. And boy, that's something that this team really needed was an offensive boost. And to get it early in this game is gonna be beneficial for their pitcher, Owen Phelps. It'll be Wakis, Apinel, and DeForest. Guys who can hit the ball, bud. Guys who can hit the ball. The meat of the lineup for the Frontier Red Hawks. Wakis is only a sophomore. Curve ball in the dirt. Oh, and one, or one and oh, rather. Now, Connor Wakis, he came through the new Gilbo League. Yep. Um, he, Turner's Falls kid, not, you know, played in that. Uh, league for many years and came here to Frontier and boy he's been a big part of this team. Phelps rocks and deals. In the dirt, ball two, 2-0. Two oh. So Wake is ahead on the count. Early going here. Well, Owen's got to bear down a little bit. He's trying to still continue to throw that curveball. It was very effective in the first inning. There you go, strike on the inside corner, makes the count two and one. Now Phelps steps out the rubber as Wake is, steps out of the box. Ooh, good curveball. Yeah, and you know what? Wakis wanted that one too, and he decided to go against it and still got the strike call anyway. You'd like to have that one back. You know, now you're now you just got yourself caught up at two and two. Now you come back with either a high heater or you come back with something in the dirt. Ground ball back to the pitcher. Phelps over to Campbell. One to three. And so far, Owen Phelps has retired the first four hitters he's faced. Yes, he has, and he's also been able to get two of those putouts by himself and the K. So three out of four done by our pitcher. That'll bring up Appenel. He is the pinch hitter. Ben Arnold is pitching but is not hitting, so Appenel will take his place in the lineup. That's a big kid. He is, but I'll tell you what, his dad was a big guy too, and he was a great hitter too. Curve ball, strike one. The curve is working for Owens on yeah. today. Well, like I said, it's definitely a pitcher's day today with the weather, and he's going to be able to get away with throwing those pitches, no problem today. Owen one, Phelps. Oh, way out ahead of it was Appenau with a changeup. Yeah, wow, what a great changeup right there by Phelps. Appenau totally fooled on that one. And that makes the count Owen two to Dylan. And he got him again on a second changeup. So that's the second strikeout for Owen Phelps. Two up, two down, and that brings up DeForest, the catcher. Well, I'll tell you right now, he's done a wonderful job being able to have control of his pitches here today. And really, he's thrown almost half as many pitches as Ben Arnold has thrown here in this game, and everything's been very effective for Owen Phelps here early. And a ball has not left the infield in this game for Frontier. 
So Phelps is dealing. Curveball in for strike one. You know what else I like is I notice he's been very patient at the at the mound, being able to take his time right. in between pitches, Chris. Well, that's something that did really happen the first time these two teams played. It seemed like he was rushing almost. Ball on the dirt, evens the count at one and one. Ground ball up the middle. Oh, and went through Cody's legs. And so it's going to be a, I don't know if that's an error or a hit, probably an error. But uh, DeForest is on. Yep. That ball seemed to play Cody a little bit. Yeah. Got the best of him on that play. That's going to bring up Kalen Evans, the shortstop. So a break for Frontier. They had their first base runner. DeForest and Evans digs in. Quick move by Phelps. Ella missed it. I uh, I did give I did give him an error on that play. DeForest trying to get in Phelps' head a bit with a big leadoff first. Curveball strike one. Really having really good control of that curveball pretty much almost every time. Nice job here so far by Owen Phelps. But right now you got a runner on first, and you've got a guy who has been able to hit the ball well for Frontier this season in Kalen Evans. Let's see if they can limit the damage here. Phelps. High for a ball. If Evans gets on, Bryce Jordan, the left fielder, will be up. Forrest takes off, high throw, and he's safe. Catch, nice catch, though, at second base. Yeah, that was a good play. Yeah, that was a really nice play, because who knows where that could have gone, and that was a really nice job by Cody to be able to catch that ball. A really high throw by Cloutier, but boy, Cloutier came right out of the stance fast with that throw, but it was just too high. Yeah, lower throw might get him in that situation, but that was a pretty high throw, so DeForest is in scoring position with the stolen base. That's exactly what Coach Skinny Williams is saying right now is, hey, bud, let's just get a base hit here. Base hit, we got a chance to score this kid. Looking to Forrest back, quick throw back to second. Look at that. back safely. Pop up, it's behind second, and Cody's gonna put it away. All right. So the error does not end up hurting Greenfield. No runs, one error, one left on. Go to the bottom, at the top of the third rather. Still Greenfield two, Frontier nothing. This is Red Hawk playoff baseball on Frontier Community Access Television. So we go to the top of the third, it's gonna be Phelps, Sewell, and Cloutier. The three up for Greenfield. Phelps, of course, a reach on a walk and scored a run in that first inning, which uh, gave, gave Greenfield their first run, and they lead to nothing. Well, you know, I, what I want people to know is, is that, you know, when you look at Greenfield's record coming in, and this is exactly what I think happened with Munson, is that, you know, last week they were able to see a team come in that's 10-10, and 10, and you're saying to yourself, wow, they can't be that good, 10-10. and 10. But really, if you really did your scouting report and you really know what Greenfield's biggest problem was, it was mainly offense. It wasn't about the pitching problem, and it really wasn't about the problem with their defense. The problem was mainly their offense. And after starting off the season 5-0 and and being able to hit well, the team really started to go into a funk. And to be 5-10 and in their last 15, it really was a testament to what this team could do on what they did at Munson, being able to win on the road 7-2, Right, and I think uh, 
their bats came alive that day, and yep. that that sometimes would need to have happened. Yeah, and if you look at our game right now, you've already got Greenfield with two base hits, two Frontiers none, and both those base hits came in at good times to give Greenfield the 2-0 lead. Of course, both these teams, if, well, one of these teams is going to advance, but they both would love to advance to the semis to take on the winner of Monument Southwick. But all those teams are in action today as well. Arnold. First pitch swinging is Phelps. He pops it up, and Kaelin Evans gobbles it up. One pitch, one out. I'll bring up Sewell, who sacrificed his first time up to advance Owen Phelps in the scoring position. <coughs> Jake Sewell made that really nice play at shortstop where he bobbled the ball and was able to make that play. That was a nice key play for him to be able to make, and that was in the first inning on Matt Hildreth. First pitch swinging, strike one. So Greenfield very aggressive. Arnold rocks and throws. Fouled off, so Arnold ahead of Sewell 0 2. So after throwing a bunch of pitches in that first inning, I think Ben Arnold's been very economical. Absolutely. In the last couple innings of those pitches. But you know what? When you're a good pitcher, you, you always find a way to try to, you know, get yourself back in the groove. Outside, the curveball, one and two. Not a bad idea right there by Ben Arnold. That was honestly a, a, a pitch that usually gets chased. So for Sewell to be able to lay off that was very good for him. Just outside, even the count of two and two. I've noticed that Arnold's really slowed down his pace after the first inning where he was dealing pretty quick. And there's a base hit to left field by Sewell. Got great contact on that one. Wow, well, beautiful hit right there by Jake Sewell. And now you're back to the two guys who've been able to do a lot of damage offensively for Greenfield all season long, and that is Colin Cloutier, followed by Hunter Campbell. Cloutier singled his first time up and scored a run. Sewell leading off. Outside corner, strike one. A lot of fans all popping in here a little bit late, getting out of work or getting the kids from school and really a beautiful crowd here at South Deerfield's Valton, uh, is it Valton Field? Is that what they call it? I don't know. All right. <laughs> hey, it's just another ball diamond for me. That's how I look That's at right. it. <laughs> what had won the count? Sewell leading off first. And Sewell's gonna go. And quick throw to second, and he is out. Oh, wow. Oh, the Greenfield fans don't like that call. I think they might have an argument. That's a horrible call. You know that's bad. Wow. You know that's bad, Kiernan. That's awful. Oof. Awful. I thought he got it, but. That's a horrible call. Greenfield fans right behind us are really not happy. <laughs> well, two down as Sewell's cut down stealing, and Cloutier at the plate. Strike on the outside, one and two. Well, no, I Bob. He was in there, but I, you know, I thought he was in there too. Yep. Well. So nobody on, two out. Arnold, pitch outside. Two and two to Colin. And Cloutier fouls it way back. I tell you, that could turn out to be a very big out for the Red Hawks here in the top of the third inning. Absolutely. Arnold rocks and fires. Pop up right near us. And Freeman has got it. That should be two out. So Cloutier fires out the first baseman. No runs, one hit. Nobody left on. 
We go to the bottom of the third. Still Greenfield 2, Frontier nothing. This is Red Hawk. Playoff baseball in Frontier for the WX system. Going to the bottom of the third for Frontier, it's Bryce Jordan, Jake Bryan, and Matt Hildreth. Three for the Red Hawks. Bobby C. almost got pegged with the ball thanks to his nephew. You gotta catch those, Hunter. I'll give him five, but as long as it doesn't hit me, man. You almost killed your uncle. That's right. I'm already crippled already, Chris. I don't need extra, you know? I've already got one bum side, I need the other. I don't know if we want to mention this, Bob, but I'm going to mention it anyway, going to the okay. bottom of the third, that Hunter, or their Owen Phelps, has a no-hitter going. He does. He has no hit so far, the Frontier Redhawks. And that may change, but a great, great pitching performance so far by Hunter, by Owen. You know, he's done a really nice job at mixing it up, and he's, his curveball has definitely been very effective for him early in this game. You know, another thing that I wanted to throw in there, Chris, is, is that uh, I want to thank you and the folks here at the FCAT for being able to have the broadcast of the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report, which is what we've been doing every week the whole year. And, of course, now is in tournament time. It gets even more exciting because we get to focus a little bit more on these teams that have done well. And I just want to say thank you to your staff and you especially for being able to carry that because it really is something the kids and the families really enjoy. Well, it's great local program. We're thrilled to have it. And uh, you can catch that show Thursday is at 1.30, Friday is at 1.30, and also in the morning on Friday at 7, and various times throughout the weekend. Thank you, Chris. Strike one to the left swinging Bryce Jordan, the left fielder. Owen Phelps. Spinning a pretty good one right now. Just outside, what did one? Chris Collins and Bobby C. We got Alec Eckel here along with Kevin Murphy. Beautiful day in South Deerfield for this D3 quarterfinal game. Phelps rocks and fires in the dirt, two and one. You know, the one thing a coach always says is do everything you can to get your eight and nine hitters. And right now, the eighth hitter for the Red Hawks is ahead in the count. <laughs> nice change up by Owen on the outside corner, two and two. Really doing a nice job being able to deal. And he's, like I said, he's really taking his time, Chris. Well, he's painting those corners beautifully. Yeah. That's gonna frustrate any hitter. And fly ball to the left, and sliding catch made nicely done by the left fielder for Greenfield. That was a great job right there by Sacker. Jake Sack with a huge catch. And you know what? Every coach likes when a fundamental play is done where you use two hands, and that's exactly what Sacker did on that play. Bit of a sliding catch, but nicely done. One up, one down, and that brings up Jake Bryant, the right fielder for the Red Hawks. Ground ball to third, gobbled up. Thrown to first, two down. So make it look easy. Oh. The two up, two down. And that will bring up the top of the order, Matt Hildreth. Hildreth hit a pretty hard shot to the shortstop, Sewell, in that first inning and Sewell was able to gather himself and still be able to get him by about a half a step. And line shot stabbed by the shortstop to retire the side. Three up, three down. Go to the top of the fourth, Greenfield two. Frontier nothing, this is Red Hawk playoff baseball on Frontier Community Access Television. So we go to the top of the fourth, Hunter Campbell, Joel Peabody, Nate Hazleton will be the three hitters for Greenfield. Going up against Ben Arnold, Greenfield leads 2-0. Courtesy of a pretty good first inning. Both pitchers have settled in very well, but right now Frontier trailing by two. Rare situation for them on their home uh, field. 
Well, you know, what it came down to is that leadoff walk from a really good at-bat by the pitcher of Greenfield, Owen Phelps, and then the really nice base hit by Cloutier, which was really started, honestly, by Sewell with a really nice bunt to get uh, Phelps into scoring position, Chris. Right. And then that really nice double by Hunter Campbell down the third base line scores Cloutier, and Greenfield was able to jump on top 2-0 in the first inning, and that's where we stand. Of course, the one controversial play was the caught stealing in the last inning. Yeah. A lot of the fans from Greenfield thought that Jake Sewell got hosed on that one, but. And it looked like from where we were that it looked like he was safe as well. Right. But the call was made. What's impressive was the uh, was DeForest being able to make that throw from his knees. Yeah, I mean, it was a, and it was a really nice throw, too. I mean, it was a perfect strike. He did a really nice job, but I just thought that Sewell was able to get a better jump on Ben Arnold to be able to get to second base. Hunter Campbell had an RBI double his first time up. And first ball swinging, ground ball to third. And just caught in time. So Hunter grounds out five to three, first ball swing, and that brings up the third baseman, Joel Peabody, who struck out the first time up. Got a couple hecklers back here. <laughs> Need how to uh, keep the control over here somewhere. You got live mics, all right. Strike outside to Peabody. 0-1. Peabody gets a hold of one. Yeah, he's a good hitter, man. Into the gap, but gobbled up by the right fielder. Nice job right there by Jacob Bryant. And that brings up Nate Hazleton, two down. Hazleton uh, flied out to left field his first time up. Strike one to Hazelton on the outside corner. So Arnold, again, very economical on his pitches in this inning. Like I said about Hazelton, he has struggled from the plate this year, but boy, he's a very strong kid, and he definitely can get a hold of one. And they got a nice gap right now between center and right for sure. And if he can be able to get a nice piece and be able to get that gap, he's at least in for a double. One and one. One and two. I don't think Ben liked that last call before, Bob. I think he thought he caught, he caught the inside corner, but yeah, I quite didn't think so. So one and two, the count to Nate in the dirt. Arnold winds and fires high. So Nate, good eye there. If he gets on, Ryan Cody is the batter. Ground ball to first. Freeman, this is going to be trouble. Flips it over to Arnold and just gets it. And that will retire the side. So Greenfield goes one, two, three. Go to the bottom of the fourth. We go two frontier and up. And this is Red Hot Playoff Baseball and Frontier from the Access Television. One. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Greenfield clinging to a 2 nothing lead. It's Bauman, Freeman, and Wakekiss, the three hitters for Frontier against Owen Phelps, who continues to be perfect against the Red Hawks. You know, he's really had a great game today, and I, like I said at the top of the broadcast, that he has not had a bad year of pitching at all. His record is surely not what he's been able to pitch. He just hasn't had a lot of run support. And for him to be able to start off this game against Frontier, a team that Greenfield hasn't beat this year, to be able to get that two extra runs to be able to go out in the field with at the end of the first inning, that's pretty good for him. And he was a part of that too by being able to score one of those runs. So the Hawks are 12 outs away from advancing, or where the green wave is. The Hawks got to get something going here quick. Well, they definitely have a lot of offensive power. 
It's just whether they're going to be able to do it today against Owen Phelps. But I, I surely believe that this game is uh, far from over with offensive productivity. Strike one for Phelps. Again, Lewin in that curveball. That one's in the dirt. Clodier couldn't quite snag it, so it's one and one. High ball two. <clears throat> two and one the count. It's a big spot right here for the Red Hawks to be able to have their top of the order up here in the top of the fourth especially knowing that you were able to hold Greenfield in the beginning of the inning. Ground ball to second, Cody over to Campbell. One out. Nice job right there by Ryan. So little athlete. four to three, that brings up Kieran Freeman who singled his last time up. I'm excuse me, I'm sorry, he ground out his last time up. Ground out to the pitcher. Again, we have not had a hit. We've had one error in this game, but no hits for Frontier. Curveball just misses outside. 0-1, or 1-0. Good cut by Freeman. <laughs> he was thinking... He was thinking yard on that one. Yeah, he definitely went after it. By the way, he's a really good first baseman, by the way. Yep, he did he a is. nice job digging a couple of balls out already in this one. One and one the count. Pops it up down the third baseline, out of play. It makes count one and two. Freeman pokes it to center field, but right at the center fielder. And snagging it was Phillips, out number two. Nice job right there by Josh. Matter of fact, every coach always says, make sure you take that step back so you can get control. He took the step back, had control. Nice play right there by Phillips. So Phelps has retired six in a row, and that brings up Wakis, the center fielder, who grounded out to the pitcher as well his last time up. All one in the dirt. You know what I think is nice about how well Owen Phelps is doing here today is I think he's got a lot of confidence in his defense, Chris. Well, he and, should. You know, they're, they're doing a great job on being able to protect him. So it's nice when you can have everybody on the same page. Just inside, 2-0. He does seem like he's very patient. He is. He's taking his time. He knows he's down, you know, two pitches here in this batter, a two and zero, oh, and he's taking his time. Rocks and fires. Do low ball three. So, just like that, Wakis has gotten ahead in the count three and zero. Oh. Apinel is on deck, and this is the first time that he has been three and zero oh against any hitter. That's correct. Here in this game. He has not walked a guy yet. No, he has not. And Coach Campbell just said to him, you know, just take a deep breath and just deal. And ball four. So four straight pitches. And Wakis is on. So the second base runner of the day for Frontier. First one courtesy of a free pass, and that brings up Apinel. So the Hawks have something going here. And Apinel, he ended up getting uh, fooled on a really good changeup that cost him. <laughs> he literally was ahead of the pitch by about a week and a half right. in that first at bat, and it unfortunately caused him a K in the second inning. But this kid can hit, man. He has some power. Lakers leads off first. Pitch one is a strike.
A little one to Apinal. Quick move back to first by Phelps. And Wakus is back safely. Owen one to Dylan. He is the pinch hitter in this game. And once again, back is Wakus. You know, I look at it this way. I'm, I, I got two outs. I'm not worrying about the runner yeah. at first base right now. I'm concentrating on my hitter. I was thinking the same thing. Don't worry about him. Yeah, I mean, you got two outs. You're, you're sitting pretty right now. I wouldn't worry about it. Well, he's not listening to you, Bob. No, he's not listening. <laughs> Again, we're in the bottom of the fourth. Greenfield up 2 nothing. And there, again, a curveball, tip, foul tipped. Yeah. That one hit Kluger in the hand, it looked like. Yeah, got him right on the, right on the forearm there. Well, I'll tell you, Phelps has, has really made Epinal's life difficult with these off-speed uh, cheese he's been throwing. Yeah, and boy, I'll tell you right now, he has really been fooled. He got fooled in that first at bat as well. Now what you do is you come in with something high and up. That's what you do. You come in high and up. 0-2 to Apinel. Wakus leads off first. Phelps is keeping him honest. And he got him again with a changeup. Wow, that changeup really worked well against Dylan Appenau. So, no hits, one runner stranded. We go to the top of the fifth. It's still Greenfield 2, Frontier nothing. This is Red Hot Playoff Baseball. Coach here for the Action Television. We go to the top of the fifth. Chris Collins, Bobby C., Alec Echo, and uh, Kevin Murphy out here at Frontier as the Hawks. Going into the fifth inning, are down by two runs. It's going to be Ryan Cody, Jake Sack, and Josh Phillips with three up for the wave. As the story of this game has been Owen Phelps. Absolutely. Owen Phelps has done a wonderful job here in this one for Greenfield. Taking full control on the mound. He's also done a nice job being able to keep a lot of their good hitters off the base pass, and that's, that's what your job is, really, and he's been able to do that very effectively. Now, let's say that really... Ben Arnold started off a little slow, but he's been just fine ever since. Yep, he's been lights out since the first. Absolutely. Cody struck out his first time up. And gets a hold of one. Ground ball to short. Evans to Freeman, one down. That'll bring up Jake Sack, the left fielder. Jake Sack grounded out to third his first time up. You know, one thing that we need to realize about these younger kids that are sitting here at the bottom of the order, you know, Ryan Cody, he, he's such a young kid with so much of potential, and Sack as well, being the freshman, and he has a, been able to play on varsity football, he played on the varsity basketball team, yep. and he's also been able to play varsity baseball as a freshman. That's pretty cool to be able to get three sports under your belt. At that young an age, yeah. Yeah, great experience. Arnold. High. That makes it 2 0. Just inside. Wow, Arnold even thought that one. He's shaking his head, going, ooh. Well, that's a couple of times he's, he's thought he had the inside corner and didn't yeah. get the call. Yep. So it's actually three and one. That first uh, swing, that check swing they said was a strike. Yeah, they did so. say the check swing went. Yep. So it's three and one to Jake Sack. And if he gets on, Josh Phillips will be the batter. And he's on. What a walk. It's a big, it's a big walk right there for Greenfield, getting the eighth hitter on the base pass. Now... Josh Phillips comes up. If he can get on, now you got your top of the order. That's only the second walk issued today by Ben Arnold. 
And DeForest out there to talk about that. So Sack is on at first. Phillips, who struck out looking his first time up as the batter. And if he gets on, as Bob mentioned, Owen Phelps in the top of the order comes up. Yep. I don't think that Sack will be much of a threat for a steal. I think that he'll be able to concentrate on the batter. And a bunt. And it's going to run foul. Not a bad idea right there with a runner on first. You know, Coach Shusnick isn't always the one who likes to do the small ball right. type coaching. He's never been that kind of a coach. And for him to be able to see two bunts here in this game, it's surprising for me as a GHS alumni baseball player myself, let me tell you. Well, he, the played, bunt worked for him in the first inning. Yeah, in their first four years run, under so. this guy, and he wasn't all about the small ball, let me tell you. Well, there you go. Bunt again. This one's foul as well, though, so it'll be 0-2. Now he's got to Phillips, so now he's going to have to hit. Yep. Sacks at first. Two strikes to Phillips. And swing and a miss. They see he went. Yep. Yeah, he did go. So two outs. And that brings up Phelps, who has walked and flat out to left. A couple of nice attempts there by Josh Phillips to be able to try to get that bunt down so that they're able to get that runner into scoring position. Foul back by Phelps, 0-1. You couldn't ask for a better day for baseball than oh, this, yeah, brother. This is, this very, is very nice. just, heck, I might even stay after and just relax. <laughs> I mean, I'm having such a good relaxing time right now. You know, that semi-retirement's been good to me, you know. Oh, baby. Relaxing in the shadow of Sugarloaf. Absolutely. Strike right down the middle. 0-2 oh, quickly to Phelps. You know, all my Facebook friends, they, they despise me on Mondays <laughs> because I tell them Monday's my favorite day, you know, because that's when my weekend starts. Fouled back as Phelps protects the plate, keeps it alive. You got to admit, Greenfield's been able to stay on Arnold here tonight. Yeah, they, they really, they really have. have. Yeah, and they've been aggressive. A lot of first pitch swings. Yep. Oh, and two to Phelps. Sack is going to run. Ball low, and Sack gets second, and he's going to stay there as the ball did go over the second baseman, but into short. Center, but not enough to advance, so we have a runner in scoring position as Sack gets a stolen base. Wow, Sacker making a move down to second base there. One and two is the count to Phelps. Now the runner in scoring position. It's a good spot right here for Owen Phelps. Phelps, fly ball to center field. Drop, 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 drop. And put away by the center fielder for Frontier. And that will retire the side. One left on, go down to the bottom of the fifth. Field two, Frontier nothing. This is Red Hawk, playoff baseball on Frontier Community Access Television. We go to the bottom of the fifth thing. It's going to be Garrett DeForest, Caleb Evans, and Bryce Jordan, the three for Frontier. DeForest reached on an error and stole second base. That's as far as Frontier has gotten in terms of a base path. Uh, he got uh, to, as far as second. That's, that's been it so far. As once again, Owen Phelps continues to deal, and he has a no-hitter in the bottom of the fifth. Very impressive job right here today by Owen Phelps, and a lot of confidence in his defense, who have also done a nice job making some great plays. One thing that we can say about this Frontier Red Hawks team, bud, they've been offensive all year long. They've been able to score runs. So this game is far from over. They still have three at wraps. They got, they got three innings to wrap the ball around. That's right. And as long as Owen Phelps can continue to do what he's doing and to deal well and being able to get that defensive support, Greenfield could walk away with a huge upset against Frontier here today. I mean, Frontier's had a great season, 19-1. and one. They have the second, they're the second seed in the division. But I'll tell you, if they lose this game, that's, oh. that's a, a real kick. I mean, really that's, that's a tough way to end a season that's been otherwise pretty good. Yeah, and, you know, I always, I've always said this, that, you know, it's always hard to beat a good team three times in a row. 
and for Greenfield to be able to come out here knowing that they've been beat twice this year and really handled by Ben Arnold and to be able to jump on him in that first inning for a couple of runs says a lot about the wave and their determination here today. DeForest at the plate. The catcher. Curve ball, high ball one. Coach Williams brought his team together there in a little huddle before the start of this half inning saying, I'm sure, come on guys, you got nine outs here. DeForest pokes it into deep left center field. This is gonna drop. And DeForest is in with a double. A good effort by the center fielder to try to haul that one in. That was Phillips, but couldn't quite get to it. So it's a double for DeForest. And suddenly, Frontier has a runner in scoring position. Yeah, but I'm gonna tell you right now, if Josh Phillips wasn't there, that was a triple. That's right. I mean, that was a beautiful job being able to get to that ball and a beautiful hit right there by Jordan DeForest. So Kalen Evans. Garrett, that is. Sorry. Right. Kalen Evans up with nobody out. And DeForest at second base. That's the first hit of the game for Frontier. And it was a big one. And Evans is laying down a bunt. And over at Campbell, that is an out. And that advances DeForest to third base. A sacrifice for Evans. One to three. Well, now all you have to do is, is just to get one of your bottom guys, whether it's Jordan or Bryant, to be able to knock in DeForest from third. And now you're down to a one-run game. And you're the home team. Jordan flew out to left his first time up. So Frontier threatening. DeForest is at third after the double and the advance and the sacrifice. And again, a little off-speed junk fouled back by Jordan. I love the pitch selection by Phelps in this game. Yeah, he, and, and if you notice, Chris, he's really taking his time in between pitches. That means that he's really focused on what he needs to do each pitch. And anybody who's a coach can really say that that's something special to have a guy who's really in control. And he's got himself under control. 0-1 to Jordan. Just outside, evens account at 1-1. One one. DeForest leads off third. High on outside. Well, this isn't the time where you want to start getting in, giving in to the bottom of the order here at Frontier. It's a big at bat right here for Bryce Jordan. Phelps from the stretch. Fouled off. Jordan slams the bat. He's not happy with that. I think he would like to have that one back. I think, he, I think he wished he never swung at it, to be honest with you. I think he knew he had another ball, baby, and he was looking at that, saying, oh, just chased a chance I just took away. Nope, now it's even up. <laughs> this is a big pitch right here for Owen Phelps. Phelps looks back to Forrest to third. Just low. Ooh. That was tight. That was a good pitch. That was a tight pitch. And even Cloutier is still shaking his head back there, saying, where was that? Cloutier <laughs> stands up, pulls the mid off. Yeah, you could, tell, you could tell when you know, after all the years you've been catching, what a strike is. And he felt that was there. 3-2. Curve ball and just getting a handle on a piece of it was Jordan to keep it alive. He had to protect the plate there. Yeah, that was a really good protective play uh, right there by Jordan. Thing is, is that Owen Phelps now, is he going to surprise you with a, one of those tricky off-speed curve balls, or is he going to come right at you with some cheese? It's a very good. We'll find out in seconds here. Foul ball. It's coming right toward Bob. Come on, Bob. Gotta make, gotta make those plays. I know. I could. It, it was just out of my reach. <laughs> huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just out of my reach. 
If I had the, if I had the long arms like Hunter Campbell has at first base, I would have had it. Three two. And he pokes it to center. And they're going to try and throw him out. It's a sacrifice fly. So Frontier is on the board. Courtesy of the sacrifice fly by Jordan. Yep. Very nice sacrifice fly right there, though. Very nice. And a nice job right there, right there in center field. He didn't even have to move, was Phillips, to make the play. And that makes it 2-1. to one. And that brings up Bryant. The right fielder grounded out to third. His last time up. Greenfield just uh, made an appeal to third base to see if DeForest left early, and the umpire said that he did not, and the run is good. So, base is empty, two outs for Bryant. Low ball one. Another kid who can hit the ball very hard. This kid's young as well. This kid's only a freshman. Another transplant from another town from Greenfield, matter of fact. This kid could be playing on the Green Wave. Instead. Well, he actually does play for the Green Wave for the cooperative, uh, for the cooperative hockey team. Yep. But not for the baseball That's team. That's right. And, uh, and the thing is, is that he has been coming to school down here since he was little, going right through the Deerfield Elementary School and through the Frontier School District here. So he's been here pretty much his whole life. He got a hold of that one, but foul. That's out for the crowd. Oh, he hit the school. Wow. <laughs> that was a shot. That was Put a that shot. one on the maintenance list. <laughs> I, want, I want to know how well that ball is right now to use. <laughs> yes. That probably is out of commission for the yeah. rest of the day. Long strike for Bryant. Line drive, base hit to center field. So Bryant's aboard. All of a sudden, Frontier starting to hit off of Phelps here. So two out single for Jake Bryant. That'll bring up Matty Hildreth. Matt Hildreth grounded out six to three and lined out to left his first two times up for Frontier, which again now trails two to one here in the bottom of the fifth. Phelps from the stretch. Strike right down the middle. Owen one to Hildreth. Curve ball. Hildreth grounds to short. Sewell will throw the force to Cody. Six to four. And that will retire the side. So two runs, one hit, and then one left on. We go to the top of the sixth. The time go two. Frontier one. This is Red Hot playoff baseball on Frontier Community Access Television. Going out of the top of the sixth inning, it's going to be Sewell, Cloutier, and Hunter Campbell. Two, three, and four hitters for Greenfield, who now lead two to one. As Frontier got on the board in the last half inning, so we would love to put up some insurance here if they can. You know, you got to say that Greenfield really came out attacking, and ever since then, they've really been shut right down as far as how they're... Uh, you know, hitting has been, but let's give credit where credit's due. Ben Arnold has really started to settle down since the first four, in, uh, four, first four guys that he has faced. Sewell, first ball swinging, flies to center field. And Wakis puts it away, out number one. This is a big part of the order right here with Cloutier, Campbell, and Peabody. Peabody, who normally is one of their good hitters, struggling a little bit here today with a strikeout and just a pop fly over to Bryant in right field earlier in this one. But Cloutier, he hit so hard. He singled and he has scored a run in this game. Just outside and high, ball one. Cloutier flies it again. Oikis in center field. Puts it away. Two up, two down. Courtesy of flyouts to center field. And that'll bring up Hunter Campbell. Hunter has singled and doubled in this game. Hey, hey, hey. 
Ball low. I'll tell you, Hunter has a really good eye up there too. He's always had a good eye for the ball. Come on, Green! Foul back. Ben Arnold doing a really nice job settling down after that first inning. I really think that right now, Ben Arnold is in control of himself, which is huge for yeah. his team. Well, he's been in a groove Absolutely. in the last couple innings. Curve ball, just high. Good high right there by Campbell. High heat. Throw him the cheese, baby. Wow, Oof. I think it was moving. That thing was moving, too. That was a nice pitch right there by Ben yeah, Arnold. Came wow. right at the cleanup pitter, which is something you don't often want to do, but that time it worked for him. Outside, low. Arnold rocks and fires. Change up, fouled back by Hunter. Did a good job to protect the plate on that one. Yeah, he, he doesn't really strike out that much. Been able to do a nice job this year on both ends. Of, honestly, he's had a great year. I think he's had definitely a stellar season. That might get and down. Poked it out, little check swing, base hit to right field. So Hunter Campbell is on. And he is three for three, actually two for three. Two for three, yep, single and a double. So that'll bring up Joel Peabody with two outs, and Campbell at first. <laughs> Campbell leads off first. Strike one swing. That was some heat, too. Nice low pitch right down by the knees, man. Seems like crazy. Arnold's getting stronger as the game goes on. I agree. And I think he just got some confidence back getting that run he needed. <laughs> Fouled off, 0-2. It always helps a pitcher when you get some extra support that you need and knowing that they were able to get that run to score from third base. Now it's a 2-1 ball game. It's anybody's game right now. It was anyway. 0-2. Campbell leads off first. Strike three, swinging. So the Campbell single goes for naught. No runs, one hit, and one left arm. We go to the bottom of the sixth. It's still Greenfield two, Frontier one. Went hot, play off baseball, and Frontier two to the end. We went out to the bottom of the sixth inning. It'll be the two, three, four hitters for Frontier Bauman, Freeman, and Wakus against Owen Phelps. Greenfield with a 2 1 lead. So Frontier's got six outs. Let's try and get this lead back, Bob. But uh, up until the last inning, Owen Phelps has been hittable. The last couple, uh, last couple times up, Frontier solved him. We'll see if they can do it again in this half inning. Well, you know, it came down to that really nice hit by Garrett DeForest picking up that big double. And then it was a really nice sacrifice that was by Bryce Jordan. And then Jake Bryant came up and he got himself a single. So the bottom of the order did their job. They did pick up a run, but now the heart of the order that's been very solid for this Frontier Red Hawks team all season long, this is where they really need to shine right now here in the bottom of the sixth inning in this Western Mass semifinal, uh, quarterfinal game here today. Bauman has struck out and ground out to second in this game. Phelps, fires, curveball, high ball one. Bauman pops it up, and Sewell puts it away for out number one. That was a nice call off right there by Sewell, had full control, and makes the out. 
for the Green Wave. That'll bring up Karen and Freeman. Freeman has grounded out and has flied out in this game. Went to Phillips last time out in center. Right. Curve ball just outside. That curve ball caught the outside corner, one and one. He's continued to throw that throughout the day. That's working for him. Yeah, and it's a perfect day for him to be able to throw that pitch. Inside, two and one. Right at the knees. Ground ball back to the pitcher. And Phelps over to Campbell. One to three. Two up, two down. That brings up Connor Wakis. The grand out of the pitcher and walked his last time up. You know that Phelps has had just as many putouts at the mound than he has for his infield here. He today. really has. <laughs> He's had it. Pretty least, impressive. Well, at least three of those. Yep. He has. Like this, the sophomore outfielder at the plate. Ground ball to third. Oh, booted at third. That's going to be an error on the third baseman. And a runner aboard for Frontier. Yeah, another error in this one for Greenfield. And that one is against Peabody. And that's going to bring up Dylan Apino with a runner in at first base. The tying runs at first. Appenel has had a tough time with the changeup today. Yeah, well, what he's done is he's, is he's thrown him, he, th he throws him a good fast one first, then he comes back and he throws him two or three curveballs. I think he's got this guy down here. Appenel has struck out twice in this game. He went through this last time with Wakus. He Wakus. did. He did. Wakus, Wakus and him were battling it out. Oh, and the, the ball went right through. Hit him. It hit, hit him. Looks like it got a piece of him. So, Apino hit by a pitch. So, just like that, we have two runners on. We have the go ahead run at first, and Garrett DeForest with two outs coming up. Came up with that big double his last time up. They're going to switch him. Get some speed out there. Appenel is going to come out and running for Appenel will be Cam Barnes, the senior outfielder. Actually, maybe they're not. Are they going to take him out? Yeah, they're going to take him out. Yeah. No. And uh, is coming out to chat with Phelps. Well, this is the first time Phelps has really been in trouble at this point in this game. This first time he's had two men aboard. I swear, I, I didn't think the ball hit him. I thought it went right through uh, Cloutier's mitt, but apparently he got a piece of him. Yep. So interesting situation here. Kalen Evans is the hitter. Oh, they're they're leaving him back in. Oh no, no, they got him at first base. They're having He's to be the first base coach, coach now. Exactly. There we go. It's like, what are they doing here? All right, here we go. So, so Cam Barnes is the first the pinch runner. Cameron Evans and a chance here to blow this open with a hit. Wakis at second, Appenel at, or rather, uh, Cam Barnes at first. Change up, way out in front of it was. This is the forest. Evans, say, Chris, just to let you know, this is the forest that's up. I'm there. sorry. Is it, I, yep, I skipped ahead. Sorry, that's that's Garrett DeForest. You're right. He doubled last time up. Correct. Strike. Oh, big spot right here for Phelps. He gets out of this one with a two-out jam. This is a big spot right here 
for Owen Phelps and the Green Wave. DeForest has scored the only run in this game for Frontier. 0-2. Outside, almost a pitch out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Barnes dives back whoa, whoa. in first. I don't know where Barnes thought he was gonna go. The runner at second. <laughs> Garrett DeForest, the catcher. Way out in front of it. That's strike a three. K right there by Phelpsy. That might be the biggest strike out of the game. And that right. strands two runners. We go now to the top of the seventh inning. Still Frontier 2, Greenfield 2, Frontier 1. This is Red Hawk Baseball on Frontier Community Access Television. Wow. <laughs> seventh frame upcoming, it's gonna be Hazelton, Ryan Cody, and Jake Sack, the hitters, for the Greenfield Green Wave which find themselves three outs away from advancing. And what some may say is an improbable scenario given the regular season record of the Frontier Redhawks. Well, if you think about this, they went out, they beat the third seed on the road down at Munson, and if they end up escaping this one, they beat the second seed. So their first two victories in this tournament play are against two of the top three seeds. <laughs> in Division Three, That's pretty impressive if Greenfield can pull that off. But this game is not over yet. No, it's not. Greenfield would duly love to get some insurance here. Nate flied out to right field and ground out to the first baseman his last time up. He definitely has the power. There's no doubt about it. Just been in a little bit of a slump this year with his hitting. This is a good spot right here for Hazelton to be able to break out. Fly ball, Wake is under it, and he'll gobble it up. One out. That brings up Ryan Cody, the second baseman. Cody has struck out, and he is actually. Uh, Ground out to short. Just outside ball one. Jake Sack follows Cody, and if one of those two gets on, Josh Phillips will be the hitter. Two and a. <laughs> Inside, two and one. Cody fouls it off. Dings a pine tree. Keeping the count. Even the count of two. Just low. And even fills it up, three and two. Let's see if the bottom of the order can get something done here for Greenfield. But he pops it up, third base line. And he's out. Two up, two down. And that brings up Jake Sack. Sack grounded out to the third baseman and walked and got as far as second his last time up. Yeah, when he, uh, when he stole right. second base. A controversial call that the Greenfield faithful felt. Uh, high ball one. Ball two. <laughs> Strike on the outside corner. Two one. Oh, <laughs> 
It's a good eye up there by Sack. Jake Sack, whose father was a pretty great athlete of his own right, Turner's Falls High School for many years. Absolutely. Strike on the outside corner. All right, he's got to protect. This is it. And he walks. Second time he was able to get on. Sacker with two walks in this game. That'll bring up Phillips, the center fielder. Phillips has struck out twice in this game. Looks like we got a pinch, got a pinch hitter, it looks hitter. like. And it's going to be number 16 for Greenfield. I don't have him on my roster. It is Bouchard. Bouchard, right. Yep, this is Bouchard. So Bouchard is in for Phillips. <laughs> His name is Keith Bouchard. By Keith the way. Bouchard. Yep. One of our little league guys. So Bouchard, the pinch hitter. Strike one. Sack the runner at first. <laughs> Strike two. Right at the knees. Nothing in two to Bouchard. Round ball. Coming this way. Nothing in two. But Bouchard gets on. It'll be Owen Phelps, top of the order for Greenfield. Strike three. Strike three swing. That'll do it. One runner left on. We now go to the bottom of the seventh. Last up for Frontier as they trail two to one. Red Hawk playoff baseball. Frontier from the Round the troops. We head now to the bottom of the seventh. Greenfield is three outs away from a major upset. The number 10 seed. Right now leading the number two seed Frontier Red Hawks by a count of two to one. It's been a great pitcher's duel, but it's been Owen Phelps who's been the story, I think, in this one, Bob, when they, whatever happens here, it's either gonna be a huge win or a tough luck loss, but he has been fantastic today. You know, the one thing we can say about Owen is that he's been in control, especially his curveball throughout the whole game here today. He's also been very patient, Chris, on being able to take his time in between pitches. And really, you know the old saying, a coach will say, it's your game, take control. Right. Well, he's listened to he's his done, pitches. He's here done tonight. that very, very well. Bottom three, actually we have, a, we have a pinch hitter coming up. Alex Jordan, Alex Jordan rather, is gonna pinch hit for Kalen Evans. So Al Jordan, has got some power in that bat, if he can get a hold of one. Pinch hitting for the shortstop, Kalen Evans, as Coach Williams looking for some pop in these final three. Curve ball, strike one. Really in control. Frontier bench trying to talk it up, trying to get their guys going. Jordan pokes this one to left. And it's gonna be over the head of left fielder. Jordan's gonna reach second. And that's as far as he's gonna go. So a pinch hit double. And that fires up the frontier side of the field. That was a shot. The tying run is now at second base. What a huge coaching call. That was right there by Coach Skinny Williams to make that call to put him in the game. That was a huge shot. He wanted some pop in the bat, and boy, did he ever get it. He knocked that thing a country mile. Now they're going to pinch run for Jordan. They're going to bring out Evans, I believe, who was the guy he hit for. It was a huge hit. Let's go, Greenway! So Alec Jordan, the senior, catcher slash DH, pokes a massive one first bat double. 
And actually, we're going to bring out yeah, Kalen Evans is going to run for him at second. So Evans at second, he's got some speed. And it's Bryce Jordan, the left fielder, at the plate. And he bunts it. And they'll go to first. Evans will advance to third. So a sacrifice for Jordan. And advances Kalen Evans to third. The tying run is 90 feet away. And the batter is going to be Jacob Bryant, the freshman. And this kid can hit. And I'll tell you right now, if you're in a situation with a guy on third with one out, this is the batter you want if it's your bottom of the order. This kid can get it done. Jake Bryant, the right fielder, has singled and is grounded out in this game. You know, I coached Jacob Bryant for three years, man, in Little League, and this kid's had a pop ever since he was young. And right now, he is in one of the biggest spots of his high school career right now as the freshman. He's up with a runner on third with only one out. A single ties this game. Curveball, strike one. So Owen Phelps in a big situation here. Owen one to Jake Bryant. Bryant, base hit to left, tie game. Huge hit right there by Bryant. Comes up with the big hit for Frontier. So the winning run is on at first. Kalen Evans scores. So right now, Alec Jordan's double is the big hit of this game, and we are tied at two, Bob. Wow, that was a beautiful hit right there by Bryant. That was all. He got, he got all of it. Every dude. bit of that one. Absolutely. The batter is Hildreth. Strike one. So great coaching decision by Williams to pinch it out Jordan. That looks like a masterful move right now. Absolutely. And we already know that Bryant's been able to hit because he's been doing it all year. And to have him come up big in that ninth spot has turned out to be very beneficial right now for Frontier and a 2-2 tie. Phelps steps off. Ooh, that was very close to a balk. So one out, one on. Hildreth at the plate for Frontier. Hildreth, up the middle, base hit. And Bryant will stay at second, so we have two runners on for Frontier, one out. All of a sudden, this is a one base hit away from being over. Brian Bauman's gonna be the head of the second baseman. He has struck out, grounded out, and flied out. This would be a great position for him to get his first hit of the game. Winning run is at second. In the person of Jake Bryant. So two, three hits in this inning. Curveball, high ball one. He's had such a good game here today, Owen Phelps. Right now, he's gonna try to find a way to get out of this jam. Phelps steps off. Diving back is Bryant. One and out of Bauman. Bauman fouls it off, evens the count at one. Could we be looking at extra innings here? Right two, high heat. Well, the one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to pass ball right now if you're Greenfield. That's correct. You need to keep that guy at second base, so Clute's got to do everything he can to keep in front of any pitches that could go out of control here for Phelps. Phelps steps off. This is as close as we've seen him as being rattled today. He's been in control the whole game. Sure has. No doubt about it. Hi. 
Yeah, you don't want to get this guy on on a walk, that's for sure. You don't want to load him up right now with only one out. And Karen and Freeman is the batter, the number three hitter. If Bauman gets on. Pickoff move. Oh, Brian is back, just barely. Oh, man. He was back safe. Nice back close play, though. But here's the thing. When you take a chance on doing that pickoff play, yep. and you got a runner on second, it goes out in the field. Now you get a chance to advance to third. Let's really go for the batter right now. Bauman pops it up. Out of play. Bauman staying alive. Bottom of the seventh. We are now tied at two. Winning run for Frontier at second base in the person of Jake Bryant. Bauman, ground ball to short. Bobbled! Everybody's safe. And the winning run is now at third. Base is loaded. And Kiernan Freeman is the batter. One out. Boy, that error right there is a huge error for Greenfield. Huge. Now you got bases loaded. One out. Sack fly. That could be the that ball game. That could be the right ball here. game. Exactly right. Shoes to actually Vinny Melendez coming to the mound to talk to Phelps. And if this does end badly for him, that's, that's about as tough luck as you're going to get, the way he's pitched today. Mm, he's had a Alex, really great game. When the game's over, the hype on the bench. So Bauman advances on the error at third. That's the third error in this game for Greenfield. But none more costly than that one, I don't think. Yeah, but if it just goes a little bit, a tiny bit over his head there, we could just backtrack and catch it. You know what I'm saying? If it's a ground, what, I think you got to focus on the got to focus on the batter at this point. Yep. Not worry about the runners, and and you're right about the pass ball situation. You would hate to see this thing end on a pass ball yep. or a wild pitch. Yeah, a wild pitch, or you know, if he throws one of his curveballs and Cludier can't get a hold of it, it could be the end of the ball game here. So there's a lot riding right now, and it's definitely in the favor of the Red Hawks here with one out and bases loaded. Bases chucked. Brian at third is the winning run. Bauman at first. Ground ball, base hit, game over. Frontier's gonna win. Kenan Freeman with the bases loaded single to the right field. And the Frontier Red Hawks advance. Unbelievable, Bob. That was a great game. Nice job, nice comeback by Frontier. Especially the bottom of the order. You gotta give credit where credit's due. The bottom of the order came through. Big hit with the pinch hit. Then you got Jacob Bryant coming up with that nice single. It's a big, big win right there for Frontier to come back. But really, a great pitching performance by Owen Phelps ends in a tough heartbreak loss for the Green Wave here today. Cannon Freeman, the game-winning RBI single, and the Frontier Redhawks beat the Greenfield Green Wave coming from behind with two runs in the bottom of the seventh to win the game 3-2 and advance to the semifinals of the Western Mass Division III baseball tournament. And I'll tell you, you're not gonna find many players that are gonna pitch a better game than Owen Phelps did and lose. I mean, that is heartbreaking for that young man, but what a performance he put on. Oh, I thought Owen Phelps was excellent today. He had good control and just came out to a couple of uh, tough plays, a couple of errors. And, uh, one that really hurt them was that play at shortstop, that error, because it kept the guy from being able, the guy got to third base, and there you have it. That would base hit would have scored him anyway. That was a shot right there to end the game, and Freeman comes up with the big base hit, and Frontier, they advance. The two seed will move on to the quarter five semifinals. They'll take on the winner of Monument Mountain and Southwick in the semis, but Greenfield's never gonna come closer to beating Frontier than they did today. That was a fantastic pitching performance by Owen Phelps and a good overall performance, but, but Frontier again at the end came up with the big hits and the timely offense when needed and they win 3-2 in the bottom of the seventh. And that will do it for our coverage of this broadcast of Frontier Red Hawk Baseball 
Bobby C, any final thoughts? Yeah, I just want to say, you know, Ben Arnold, great job being able to compose yourself after that first inning. You gave up two, and then you shut him down the rest of the way. Your defense did a nice job, too. And Frontier, congratulations. Moving on, a team that can be reckoned with in this Division Three tournament. Tell you right now, this isn't the end for Frontier, but this was a good wake-up call for this team against Greenfield here today. Absolutely. The big hit was the Alec Jordan pinch hit double down the left field line. And, of course, the winning hit, Darren uh, Freeman with the base hit to right. The base is loaded to score Jake Bryant. That's how it goes. That's your final 3-2 at the bottom of the seventh. The Frontier advances. Thanks again to my broadcast partner, Bobby C., to Alec Echo, and the executive producer of Frontier Regional Sports. I'm Chris Collins. Final score, Frontier. At the bottom of the seventh wins it. They advance. 3-2 over Greenfield. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Frontier Community Action. Ah!